Hello and welcome to Channel Sport this morning. It's great to have you join us again. I am Taya Salam. This is what the show looks like. Starting off with the Super Eagles of Nigeria. 16 players are in camp in Lagos ahead of Thursday's World Cup qualifier against the Central African Republic. We've got all of the updates that are coming uh, from the Super Eagles camp for you in the course of the program. Also in sport this morning, Emel Doka, that's a former D Tigers forward, has made a winning start to his tenure as a coach of the Boston Celtics with a very narrow victory over the Orlando Magic in their first preseason game of the season. Also on spot this morning, the journey to the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics begins today for Nigerian colors in Turkey. All right, so that's join us and try and stick with us uh, for uh, these and more uh, on the show. Uh, but we're going to start uh, with uh, Nigeria's uh, journey or campaign uh, to uh, the Olympics. That was the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics uh, for next year. I've got the president of the Nigeria Curling Federation with me, Damola Daniels, and he's going to be telling us everything we need to know about this new sport in court as they attempt to qualify for the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. Damola Daniels, good morning. It's great to have you on the show. It's my pleasure <laughs> to be here with you guys on Channels TV in the beautiful city here in uh, Lagos, right? Yes. Nigeria. Indeed, indeed. Uh, we, we've had you on the show several times, uh, mm -hmm. but has been virtually, Skype, then Zoom. Uh, so it's great to have you, uh, you know, physically uh, present in our studios right here in Lagos. Thank you, Taya. I'm most delighted to be here. I know, I know. It's, it's exciting times uh, for curling, uh, definitely, in the country. Uh, that's because uh, the qualifiers is going to start uh, today, as a matter of fact. Uh, before uh, I get into all of the nitty-gritty concerning Nigerian curlers and the attempts to qualify for the Winter Olympics, uh, let us give you uh, what uh, the draw looks like uh, for the country uh, in Turkey, who they're going to be playing and when they're going to be playing and all of that. So starting with the, with the mixed doubles. Yeah, Nigeria's going to be action in the mixed uh, doubles. Uh, in Group A is Belarus. There's also Latvia, Lithuania, Portugal and Slovakia. In Group B, there's Brazil, Kazakhstan, Nigeria, Slovenia and Turkey. While Group C has Australia, Belgium, Denmark, Mexico and Chinese uh, Taipei, that's for the mixed uh, doubles. In the men's singles, Nigeria will also be attempting to qualify for the Winter Olympics. They are in Group B as well. But in Group A, there's Brazil, Kazakhstan, Chinese Taipei, and Turkey. While in Group B is Nigeria, the Czech Republic, Finland, Hungary, Nigeria, and Slovenia. Group C has got Belgium, Spain, Estonia, Latvia, Romania, and Slovakia. So that's what it's looking like uh, for Nigerian colors as they try to qualify for the Winter Olympics uh, that's going to hold next year in Beijing. It's going to be very, very uh, interesting uh, indeed to see how they navigate this uh, particular uh, scenario because uh, a lot of the countries uh, that are featuring uh, are very good sides uh, when it comes to color. We're seeing pictures are coming uh, from the home base curlers as well. So they're not being left out. And that's why Damola Daniels is in the studio is going to be telling us all their plans are uh, to continue to develop this sport, especially at the grassroots. Uh, but before we get to the grassroots, Damola, today, D-Day for Nigeria as they attempt to qualify for the Winter Olympics. Uh, what do you have to tell us about that? Their chances, uh, how they're doing, preparations-wise and all. Well, uh, a kudos to my team, Team Mixed Double uh, for Nigeria. TJ Cole and Suzy Cole will be, you know, mm. flying the flags of the country today, 7 p.m. precisely. They're already in uh, Ezrom, Turkey. Right. They had their pra practice section yesterday, mm. and they are doing well. What we needed to do was, you know, make do with what we have, and then uh, see what we can make out of it. But one thing is sure, we're going to qualify the country for 2022 Olympics. And they've been training hard there in Denver, Colorado. And also, uh, we've been watching footage of others, you know, mm. to make it uh, possible for us to get into the game and then, you know, exhibit our game plan. Mm. I think the 
team is in high spirit. I spoke with them this morning, right. yesterday, and at all time. Though I'm not there with them today, I'm here in the country trying to see the home base, trying to you know put them through on what to do on the floor curling. But yes. also, as well, I'm going to be with the team in Kazakhstan. But for now, I just need to focus on the home front and what we are doing here currently, you know, soliciting for where's and how we can get funds, you know, to support this team because we have uh, almost uh, three three events to go, mm. and also we have about. Uh, uh, three countries to visit. Right. Now, Turkey, thereafter in November, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, after that also in Scotland as well. So we have the mixed two, we have the male team, mm. then the female team comprises of the home base. Mm. So now in this particular championship in Israel, mm. Turkey, yep. we have the mixed doubles and the male team who's yep. going to be playing. And that's going to cost us a lot. And basically everybody knows that our coaches are, are, are European as well and Canadians mm. as mm. well. So that's going to, you know, and grab a lot. Not for free. Right? Not for free. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got to pay their tickets. You mm. got to pay the accommodation, feeding allowances, and so on. Mm. So that costs us money. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, our money is a problem when it comes to sports uh, generally uh, in the country. We'll get to that uh, much uh, later on. Uh, but before then, still talking about the, the Turkey pre uh, Olympic qualification uh, event, uh, Nigeria's chances. Uh, uh, what are they playing first uh, today? Uh, uh, our first game is against, uh, I think, uh, is it, is it Brazil, uh, Kazakhstan? Yeah, Brazil also. Okay. Today, 7 p.m. Nigerian mm. time. Okay. Then after that, we have the next day and the following day as well. And so it's still the same uh, old, in quote, try and trusted partnership of uh, TJ and Susanna Cole, the right? Dynamo. I call them the Dynamo that's Pairs. What you, that's <laughs> what they go by now. Because, you know, one, one beautiful thing about our sport is when we started the sport, it was myself. The Secretary General being my wife. Mm. So, you know, the, the only person you can trust most to, you know, get it done for you is your partner. And that's what is working out for them. <laughs> I see. I like that uh, comparison. Uh, makes uh, sense. Uh, so we wish uh, TJ and Susanna, Susanna Cole uh, all the best as they begin their campaign uh, to qualify for the Beijing Winter Olympics uh, in... Uh, yeah, in Beijing next year. So we wish them all the best. Uh, uh, so let's carry on with the conversation now. It's very important. Uh, uh, TJ and Susanna Cole, obviously, uh, are based uh, out of the country. So things are a bit more easier for them uh -huh. uh, to get done. But what about the guys in Nigeria? I know you've said over and over again that you will not neglect the Nigerian crawlers. And that's the main reason why you're even in the country. We've seen pictures are coming from the floor uh, curling that you're trying to improvise so just to make sure these uh, guys are in tune with the way the sports are is played before they eventually get on ice. Tell us more about that. Of course, I know you mentioned uh, the funding issues already. Some time ago in your show via Skype, I said, and I quote, you, pre you were the presenter and Austin uh, Okonakban. Right. I said, I want this sport to rival football in the country. Hmm. I mean it with every inch, every sweat in me. Now, for this sport to grow, we, we can't but focus more on the home front. That is the major reason why we brought the sport to the country. Right. Now we have players in the diaspora, a mm. lot of a them. Lot. But for the sport to grow in this country, we just have to focus more on the home front. So that's why you see us, you know, we are putting everything we can mm. to make sure that we develop the home front. And basically, we are taking the home front uh, coilers for the Kazakhstan pre-qualification game. Bulk of them are the female team oh. and at least uh, two male. Okay, I see. So, uh, because I noticed uh, for the pre-Olympics uh, qualification in Turkey, there's no female team for that one. So you're deciding to take the home-based curlers for the Kazakhstan events. That's what you're saying. Right, right. That's mm -hmm. awesome. The reason is that, like we promised, like I promised that, look, we're going to be making sure that the home front are represented. Mm. Now we are improvising for them as of now, mm. trying to use what we have, the floor coiling, you know, you know, to make do of the techniques we can, you know, impute in them. So when they get out to the main uh, ice there, they have about maybe three days uh, ice time. Yeah, what we true. wanted to do was to, you know, send them out for training tour. But because of the funding, you know, we had to, you know, improvise to make sure that the fundings that were supposed to be used for the training tour, we now use it for the championship because we don't have fundings. All the fundings they've been seen, it has been from me, 
my other executives as well and my, you know, yours really my partner, mm. which everybody knows, the Secretary General of the Federation. So we have been the one funding the Federation wow. to this level. So that's why we had to, you know, make do with what we have in order for them to, you know, to get to the ice and then see what can come out of it. But we believe that the impossible takes a little longer. Mm, indeed, uh, you just got to keep uh, pushing. And uh, in terms of uh, support, uh, obviously, you, just, you said it all. Uh, everything is being done by, by you and your team uh, to, to get to the level that you are now. Uh, what about support uh, from the ministry, from the NOC? Because by extension, you're going to be representing that, you know, not only your federation, the country as well. So if you make it to the Olympics, that's going to be historic. We saw it at the last Winter Olympics when the bobsled and skeleton, skeleton team made it. And the whole country celebrated like that they were it. part of that the journey. But good enough, I'm a straight shooter. I'm a, a straight talker. Right. I'll say it straight. Mm. No support from the ministry. None. And also none. Now, let's... Why is that? It. Have you been in touch with them? I have a letter delivered to the office of the minister. Mm. I have a copy from my staff. You understand? The truth be told, we all bleed red worldwide. This is a green and white color of the country. Mm. We are flying there. Not Mr. Damola, Daniel, right. nor the sec gen or the technical crew oh, or no. the, the, no, board of the federation. The this is the country. The national anthem says, some stanza says, Nigeria score. And we obeyed. And what is the country now doing in response to that as well? Mm. Should we now qualify tomorrow? They will now come and be, you know, playing their drums on our feet or what? Mm. This is the issue concerning the country, not an individual. They should also say, oh, what do you guys need from our own end so yeah, that we can know what to do for you guys? Now, diplomatically, we will need their, uh, you know, the support. The almighty federal government has got everything it takes to do everything. Mm. But now we are going out there on our own. Should anything happen to any of the players, what will happen? Mm. Diplomatically, otherwise, they know that we exist. They know that we are you know, portraying the image of the country positively. And above all, this is a country without no eyes. We are ranked fair, wide, wide, far ahead of other European countries. Mm. Yet, we are here now, you know, soliciting for funds, mm. help from them, from everywhere. We ain't getting nothing. Wow. This is not fair for the country. Hmm. Hopefully, the authorities are listening and uh, will uh, do right eventually uh, before uh, it's all said and done uh, for the Nigerian colors as they once again attempt to qualify for the Winter Olympic, which is going to be historic uh, because uh, uh, for a Nigerian country, uh, for an African country to qualify for the curling... We are the only one. ...events of an Olympics. Africa. Yeah. There you go. It'll be a major, major milestone in history uh, for the country. So, uh, like I said, hopefully uh, the authorities are listening and will do the right thing before it's too late. You want to say something before yeah. Karen? Yeah. Tayo, let me also give them a shocker here. But mm. because of our efforts, collectively from Nigerian Curling Federation, Africa, Africa has been given a slot in the next okay. Youth Winter Olympics. All right. Who's so, going to fly the flags of Africa? Basically, mm -hmm. Nigeria. And we've started our programming for that now. Because mm. we signed an invitational program with uh, Canada, Canada. Uh, Canada right. which uh, is going to commence from 2022 to 2025. Mm. Now, we've started already. See, Look, sports has everything it takes to develop a country. Absolutely. But what are we doing in the country to make this happen? Mm. We shouldn't be looking at the king of sports, which is football or basketball. Or, or we should also we have just two high sport federation in the country: bobsled and skeleton and Curling. coiling. Now sure. we should also encourage because there are still many more to come. So if we must win medals at every Olympics, we should diversify Damala, from football. I, I totally agree. You got to di diversify. Um, uh, there's no doubt about it. We see in other sectors as well too. But in case you're not aware, a lot of these other sports and federations are facing similar challenges as well too. It's terms, a simple solution. Yeah, in terms Just of give them funding. autonomy. Then you, the sport administrator, they make the policies. Mm. That's how it works outside the country. That's then they can be able to make something happen. Mm. You understand? Totally Diversify. Mm. Okay, look at our sports, for example. We've been running for 2017, yet we've been making a mark for the country. Mm. No sponsors, no nothing. But yet we're still growing mm. and we're still expanding. Now, 2024, the Youth Olympics, we're going to be there. But we've started making preparation. Mm. So this is how it works in the Western world.
Uh, they, they are doing their bit on terms of, but they should bring in the, the technocrats that knows how to, you know, make this happen for sports. Mm. Indeed. Um, Damola, I know you have a lot to say. And, um, yeah, still talking about uh, the youth uh, program, you're going to go for the um, Youth Olympics, right? That's going to be uh, in uh, 2024. That's fantastic. And uh, secondly, I hear uh, there's going to be an African curling uh, championship as well too in December. Tell us more about that. Yeah, that African Floor Coiling Championship is our uh, own initiative. I think uh, the world body has sanctioned it as well. Okay. Because uh, when we started in 2017, recognized in 2018, we were charged with the responsibility of spreading the sport across Africa. So myself and the Secretary General are spearheading that. Then we proposed this uh, idea to them. They welcomed it. The equipment, as we speak, has been imported to the country, awesome. played by us as well. But we're trying to put some few uh, final uh, touches into what is going to happen. Okay. And we have about uh, five countries coming in. We mm. have Gambia, Senegal, South Africa, Kenya, the latest one to join the WCF, and we, the host country, Nigeria. Because we already helped uh, Kenya to come into the fold of uh, WCF, that's World Coiling Federation, as a member nation. But they are not playing nation yet because we have to go back there now and train them as well. You know, introduce the sport, the technical knowledge and everything to them. Then the world body will come in as well to help as well. Mm -hmm. So it has been fantastic for us on the floor coiling. I think uh, we're going to have it if everything goes well. Because all letters is going to still go through Olympic Committee and the Ministry of Sport. Just for the record. Mm -hmm. Just for the record. So that they won't say we didn't do the needful. All right. That's very important. And I'm glad that you are... Uh, going down that route. You've talked about all of the challenges, uh, funding, major problem. Facility as well too, is major, is an, is an eye sport. And there was a time when uh, you talked about uh, developing your own facility somewhere in Calabar, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, well, what's the latest with that one? I just got back from Calabar about two days ago. I was in Cross River State to see what is going on there. But let's talk about the facility now mm. from day one. We wrote a letter to the Ministry of Sport requesting for land. They turn us down. Now, this facility is not meant for us for crying out loud. It's for the citizenry. The facility is going to be used by other kind of ice sport we are trying to, you know, we want to make Nigeria the capital of, of ice sport. Mm -hmm. If they allow us no enabling environment for that. Now, they turn us down. What do we need to do? We have to go and buy a property somewhere far off. Lagos. In Cross River, so you in wanted Cross to do the Lagos State. course, yes, right? Yes, we mm -hmm. applied for a land behind the National Stadium, which we know they have a, a facility, a, a, a landmass there. They said because we are not under the Ministry of Sport. This is not about who is who. It's about developmental program. Mm -hmm. We don't own the land. They, we own the facility in terms of using it to train people. The land belongs to the government, which is directly Ministry of Sport. So that alone is we also developing sports structurally wise. Now look at it. We're going to have two sides of the rings. One for dedicated coiling. The other one is going to be used by other high sport. And that alone is the first of its kind in the entire African region, which is going to create more tourism, more e exchange for the country. Mm. So I see no reason why they shouldn't do that. But going further. We've started doing our thing. We cleared our land, fencing it, doing everything we can, raising funds the, the best way we can. The architectural designs are on ground, everything. So we're still pushing for the facility to be so, developed. So I, I just want to take you back to uh, the reason that was given uh, that you're not under the Ministry of Sports. Uh, what does that mean? We Why applied you... in quotes. We have it on record. Because what they believe is... You you're know, not under the Ministry once, of Sports. Once, yeah. once you're not... A recognized federation under the federal ministry of youth and sport well, why are you not we applied uh, we are waiting for them so i could show you the the, 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 got the documentation uh, everything to submitted to them everything mm -hmm. submitted to them and also uh acknowledged since i think 20 2019 or thereabouts wow. so we don't know what is up but yeah. the truth be told just to wrap up now we are doing the right thing so we don't flinch mm. Interesting, uh, Damola. I know we can go on and on and on because there's a lot to talk about uh, when it comes to the sports of curling uh, and its uh, development in the country. But we're going to have to leave that conversation for some other time. Uh, I know you'll be back in the country uh, soon uh, again and uh, we'll take it uh, from where we're leaving it. I want to thank you very much uh, for your time. I wish you all the best, uh, the team, all the best uh, today.
as we you know, begin their campaign uh, to qualify for the Beijing 2022 Winter like Olympics. Like we said, it, the impossible takes a little longer. So everybody there, support Nigerian Calling Federation. We look forward to making the country proud, and definitely we shall deliver to the country. Thank mm -hmm. you all, and we love the country. That's why we are here to serve. The Indeed. country calls, and we are obeying. Indeed. Thank you very much for your time again. Uh, but we got to let you go now. See you soon. Uh, you. We need to go on a break. Uh, guys, just uh, stick uh, with us. Uh, when we come back, Inel Bong Monday will be joining us uh, for uh, the rest of the stories across the amazing world of sports. Join us again. Welcome back to Channel Sports this morning. Nyabong Monday is in the studio now. We're going to be talking about the Super Eagles of Nigeria and their preparations are for uh, the World Cup qualifier against the Central African Republic. Ine, good morning. It's great to have you again. Yeah, good morning, Taya. Very good to be here. And barnstorming session you had. With, Indeed. Uh, it, was, it was very interesting. <laughs> and I totally agree with the sentiment. Um, mm. I, I've always thought that there's an over-concentration on football uh, around here. And... We need to diversify because when we go to the to the Olympics, for, for instance, we went to the Olympics the, the, the last time and our football teams were not there. They didn't qualify. And no. they, they, they didn't qualify. And it, it always looks like without football, we can't win. We win medals at global meets like that. And I totally agree with him. We, we need to diversify in a very, very good way in terms of getting to, to, to explore other sports because... In the last Olympics, I saw what Egypt, the, the Tunisians, you know, the South Africans are always doing. And they're getting medals in swimming. Swimming. Medals in, yeah. in, in lots of sports that we don't give that kind of concentration. So curling, um, it might look uh, um, unpopular around here, yeah. but I think it's an area we can explore. Why not? Anything to get medals at the Olympics, anything to get medals at Global Meet. So I totally agree with his sentiments. Mm. And, and, and I hope that the powers that be, the people who run our sports will, will take this more seriously than they're doing at the moment. That's the hope, and that's what we all hope for, uh, for curling and every other uh, lesser sport out there uh, in cool because we've seen that uh, come major competitions like the Olympics or the World Championships, uh, these countries win the same medal as football. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the medal is not different from what they give our uh, footballers. Exactly, so, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so let's leave it at that uh, for now. Uh, let's